Hello and welcome to The Moaning Show. My name is HED01 and I'll be your host. In this particular edition I would like to very much to speak to you about the lack of original ideas or reboots, specifically in movies and television. Now, reboots in movies and television is nothing new. It's when uh, a movie studio has a specific idea, they go with it, and eventually they grow to dislike the idea. Uh, one spe specific uh, movie franchise springs to mind, and that is the Spider-Man franchise. Uh, which has been rebooted twice in the last 10 years. Um, maybe 15 years if you're being picky. It's actually 20, closer to 20. Uh, Spider-Man was played by uh, Tobey Maguire in the first three films. Then you had Andrew Garfield and now it's Tom, whatever his fucking name is, Tom Holland I think his name is. And um, it just shows you how much attention I paid in the movies. Uh, and the thing is, because of the so-called Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU as it's more affectionately known, these fucking movies are turned out year after year after year after year. And Tom Holland has just finished filming his second Spider-Man movie, yet he's been Spider-Man in a movie five times. This is how ridiculous this fucking shit is. And you just think, well, that's a bit silly. Or, you know, that doesn't make sense. Or, And it's nothing new. Movie franchises, or specifically superhero franchises, are rebooted all the fucking time. I mean, take the Batman franchise, one of my favourites, for example. You had, um, obviously, the cheesy, corny real fun 60s hip series with uh, Adam West and Burt Ward as Batman and Robin and even they produced the movie you know a full length feature length uh, uh, motion picture and then it went sort of like 20 years or 22 years and then we had the Batman film of 1989 with Michael Keaton under the cowl versus uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker uh, that spawned a, a sequel, which spawned another sequel, which spawned a really fucking terrible sequel, Batman and Robin with George Clooney. Um, and then it stopped for a bit, because it needed to be uh, readdressed. And we didn't see Batman on the big screen uh, for another eight years, in 2005, when Christian Bale... Uh, wore the bat suit in a brilliant film, Batman Begins. Uh, most people would consider the second one, The Dark Knight, the, the best of the Nolan trilogy. Um, I th still think it's Begins, to be brutally honest with you, but that's my personal opinion. What's yours? Comments down below. But what gets on my fucking nerves is how many times something can be rebooted because after the third of those Batman films um, The Dark Knight Rises you know it all finishes up the storyline finishes and there was hints at a sort of like a sequel movie um, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt um, didn't come to anything and we've yet to see Batman on the big screen since The Dark Knight Rises which has been a good five six years now at least and nothing wrong with that obviously they're taking their time although uh, I've just remembered that Ben Affleck has been Batman in two films uh, Batman vs Superman and um, Justice League so I do apologize about that mistake but nonetheless he wants to stop but then again that was another reboot so in other words you got the 60s Batman was probably the first Batman film reboot to the 89 with Keaton, reboot to uh, 95 with Val Kilmer, Re excuse me, reboot to 97 with um, George Clooney and that god awful shit uh, film Batman and Robin, reboot to the Christian Bale trilogy, reboot to the um, Ben Affleck uh, stuff 
or Batfleck as it's more known. That's six reboots, technically, all right? It's just a different actor, but when you go through a different production comp uh, production uh, setup, in other words, Tim Burton was taken out of the director's chair for Batman Forever with Val Kilmer, you then have to think about, you know, is it a reboot, is it not a reboot? I personally think it is, because it's a different style, it was more flashy, more comic book, whereas the first two, Batman and Batman Returns, were fucking gothic, you know, it was all sorts of uh, darkness, but that's what Batman is, he, sh he stalks in the shadows. Anyway, going off topic a little bit. With reboots, it's a lack of original ideas, in my personal opinion. You know, you, you go to uh, original screenplays written by, you know, really good uh, uh, screenwriters and you know, book writers that are trying to adapt a, a novel into a story or into a film, and you just think, well, yeah, well, uh. and then the studio, the film studio, be it, say, like MGM, Columbia, um, um, I can't think of any more of it, 20th Century Fox, you know, things like that, they initially think, yeah, we'll try that, oh no, sounds a bit shit, you know, it's like a load of crap. And then you think, well, 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 we've always got Spider-Man on hold. We could, we could do that again. Oh, uh, let's let's phone let's phone the actor who played Spider-Man in the last time. Get in contact with him. See if he's interested. Now, here's where that kind of thing slips up. One person might be interested in returning to the role, but say like if Kirsten Dunst, who played Mary Jane, his love interest, wasn't interested at all, then you think, oh, fuck. You know, I'm speaking in terms of the studio making, potentially making the film, you know. Tobey Maguire's on board, because Tobey Maguire, what's he done since he's done Spider-Man 3? Seabiscuit, that's it, he's done fuck all else. You know, and that's maybe his fault, maybe he's thinking he's too big for his britches, or, you know, I'm better than that fucking piece of shit film. You know, I haven't seen Tobey Maguire do anything. But then again, he might have been smart enough to save his millions from making the movies, you know. These people, these movie stars must be uh, making five mil minimum, you know, for making these fucking things. I mean, you look at the cast of the Avengers uh, franchise, um, and we're not talking about John Steed and Emma Peel here, we're talking about the uh, Marvel uh, movie Avengers like Spider-Man, Iron Man, you know, all that sort of bollocks. But those people are now technically out of work. You know, Robert Downey Jr., as my dad was saying uh, about a week ago, how Robert Downey Jr. could fall off the wagon again with regards to um, the Iron Man franchise uh, being technically over as far as this timeline is concerned. Uh, how he's been playing Iron Man for a good 10 years and it, there is some truth to that remark you know you, you've got to think about well Iron Man 1 kind of restarted this uh, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe you know which encapsulates all sorts Spider-Man, Venom you know and you think well you know and all sorts of others and the worrying thing for someone like Robert Downey Jr who is a reformed uh, drug abuser is are they going to go back to it are they going to go and fuck themselves up again now all that's finished he's got his millions he's made his millions as Iron Man and Tony Stark you know all that shit but now he's free to pick and choose what he does because there's no doubt in my mind that somehow if they want to and if there's a lack of original ideas, to so say like there's a romantic story um, from uh, a Disney perspective about, uh, say, uh, a young man who pines for this uh, woman he goes to school with, but yet she marries the class um, asshole. And as a kid, and sort of like, he meets up with her just when they go for coffee or something, and she starts to fall for him, and because she's in a horrible relationship, you know, all that sort of bullshit. You know, you got a potentially good drama out of 
of it or my idea for a uh, a um, a Disney princess that can't sing I'm not going to go into any more details because that's my that's my pitch to Disney slash Pixar uh, but that's what I'm getting at instead of going for something original that's written from a brilliant screenwriter or whatever they think oh they can go for the next Iron Man movie or the next Spider-Man movie because they're proven box office winners hits you know that they make money for these uh, movie studios oh here's 50 million or here's 80 million to make the next Spider-Man movie what you want 15 million to make my friend and lover you know it's fuck off and that's what I'm getting at here. It's potentially dangerous for the future of uh, cinema and maybe entertainment as well as a whole because it's not just uh, Marvel, I'm only using that as an example. It's all of um, interactive media. I mean, right when you watch something like you're watching me on YouTube right now, excuse me, this is potentially dangerous for video games as well what's pr a proven success gets re-released 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 and re-released i'll show you a perfect example because i've got them right in front of me now this perfect example no doubt you would have heard of them by now if you're a a gamer or even if you're not a gamer you would have heard of them and i do apologize for the amount of time i was away there look at this the Call of Duty franchise. When something's a success, sequels and spin-offs are, you know, churned out at a moment's notice. You know, it's sort of like the idea for something is uh, stretched to the overall limit. Yes, there might be the odd gameplay tweak here or there, but the difference between, say, advanced warfare, yeah, and modern warfare not all that great or I, I do believe um, uh, advanced warfare is space combat but apart from that it's a first person shooter there's not going to be much uh, difference between one of them or another one graphics might be better but you see where I'm going with this you know and it's the lack of imagination of creators which is why the odd game gets a really amazing review you know it's what they call a new intellectual property which is where a developer comes up with something so unique it's absolutely incredible but then you get reboots of old games specifically um, just on a, uh, a game that I'm fairly sure you'll be familiar with if you know Call of Duty you know Doom now Doom has just celebrated its 25th birthday uh, uh, in other words 25th anniversary and it was banned at the time you know a lot of people couldn't get their hands on it and I've seen videos of it recently and it's very tame by today's standards it was banned because there was blood guts and gore and as long as you put a, a sort of like a disclaimer type thing like there will be underneath this video every fucking video I put out I put a disclaimer just in case some kid sees it and starts calling his mum a bastard or whatever. There's a disclaimer at the bottom of the video and that always stays on there. That is my personal preference. In all honesty, I wish I wouldn't have to put up, put up with that sort of shit. And I wish I didn't have to put those bloody things on there anyway. But I do them just in case, you know, I get a email from YouTube or whatever just saying uh, uh, blah 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 Mrs blah 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 from um, Tallahassee in America has just basically said well that's a low that's uh, a lot of swearing from one young man you know he's really and to Mrs T blah 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 from Tallahassee fuck you you know this is freedom of speech talking your first amendment by the way but um that's what I'm getting at. A lack of indiv you know, individuality, new ideas. I mean, every year, more or less, you're guaranteed a Call of Duty game. You're guaranteed an Assassin's Creed game. You're guaranteed a FIFA game. 
and a Pro Evolution soccer game. That's four games you're guaranteed every year, maybe a Madden American football game as well. And there's not a lot of difference between one year and the next. And you think, well, if there's not a lot of difference, then why keep pumping them out? So, like, on a FIFA game, for example, you can be, so like, teams from uh, the four football leagues in, in this country, you know, Premier League, Championship, Division 1, Division 2, or League 1, League 2, whatever they're fucking called, right? I've been waiting for years for them to input the football conference um, so that I can play as uh, my beloved Woking in FIFA games yet they don't do it and yet that would be the ultimate dream not only for me but for someone who who, who is also a fan of a non-league football club to take them up to the Premiership win the Premiership and eventually win the Champions League you know that would be great seeing Woking take on Barcelona or Real Madrid that would be fucking fantastic you can do that in management sims who wants a fucking management sims I want John Smith of Woking, I mean, it probably isn't a John Smith, but just, you know, just bear with me here, taking on Messi and taking out Messi in a, like a two-footed tackle and getting sent off in the Champions League final, but Woking win 1-0 just in, just because Messi is not on the pitch, you know, and he's fucking injured. Ronaldo's doing all of that fucking uh, jinking and jiving shit for Juventus and, like, like David David takes him out with a two footed tackle and he's out for six months as Ronaldo and Juventus don't win the league but um, Woking win the sort of like their best uh, World Club Cup or some shit like that you know be fucking incredible you know all things considered but it's just the lack of ideas you know Star Wars is another one Star Wars used to be something really special. There, there would be a movie once every seven and a half years, or some some shit like that. And then the prequels came out, and then shit hit the fan, and they were. Uh, and then Force Awakens came out, and it was fucking fantastic. You know, the first proper Star Wars film in fucking like. 10, 12 years and it was incredible and then the new one came out and it was a bit and then Disney bought the franchise and said right we're going to bring out a Star Wars film every year it might not be a numbered one but it might be a a Han Solo movie or Rogue One or it might be a movie about Obi-Wan Kenobi or something like that and then nowhere near a special anymore and the new one comes out in about three and a half months at the time of recording this video and you just think uh, you know, we'll see the end of like certain things and we'll do this we'll do that and you just think yeah okay what's next and as a fan of something like Star Wars myself I shouldn't be thinking like that it's like fuck yes it's new Star Wars it's fucking I've got two lightsabers up here on my wall uh, of the relatively expensive ones and I love them they're great but they're thinking in the if they do make any more after this they're thinking about not having lightsabers what so you're just going to have people shooting with guns and shit (laughs) well done Disney and the ironic thing about all of this is that Disney owned the rights to Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Weird, huh? And it just goes without saying, there's a new subject for a new moaning show uh, coming up about Disney, so keep an eye out for that in the future. But anyway, that's about it for uh, this edition of the moaning show, um, about reboots and all that sort of shit. Another thing that's been rebooted quite a bit is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, universe. And I caught some of the most recent edition, uh, you know, recent reboot the other day, and it's fucking terrible. The animation's awful. You know, one turtle is like stick thin and is very. like that, and one turtle's massive, great big beast of a fucker. And. 
there was barely any threat, you know, they're laughing their heads off at certain people, you know, like Shredder and all of that. And all Shredder is is a black wisp with his helmet. I mean, what the fuck is that? Turtles used to mean something to me as well, but again, that's another story for another time. And again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time for episode 60 of The Moaning Show. And it's probably going to be quite a controversial one. I'll see you next time for more moaning. See you then.